So here is the scenario. You go and buy yourself a brand new Canon C70. You put a nice fancy Canon lens on it. You shoot at C-Log2 for the maximum dynamic range. You put middle gray at 32% uh, as Canon recommends. And you put the footage into your computer and apply the official Canon C-Log2 LUT. And you end up with this. And you think to yourself, this is not particularly good looking footage. What went wrong? Why are other people able to get such a good result out of this camera? And yet my footage looks kind of flat and dull and a little bit grainy. Today we're gonna to look at why the footage that comes out of the Canon cinema cameras, if you follow Canon's guidelines, doesn't look very good and what to do about that. So there are quite a few reasons why Canon's recommended settings don't give you a particularly cinematic image. The main reason is that the manuals and the recommendations are done by the engineers that design the chips and the cameras and not by actual filmmakers uh, who use the cameras. Um, this has been Canon's issue for a long time and I guess why channels like mine exist. They make amazing tools, uh, but they don't really have a good sense how to recommend to the people that use them how they're best used. So exposing uh, middle gray at 3200 in C-Log 2 gives you the most dynamic range, but not necessarily uh, the most information where it really counts, right? In a shot like this, and most shots, what you're really worried about is the skin tone, skin definition, um, the dimension of the skin and its color. You probably wanna put that much higher at around 50% IRE. Uh, between 50 and 60 is the middle tone of the skin. And as long as you're not uh, blowing out uh, the highlights of the skin, I have the middle tone at 55, 60, and I have the high tones at 60 to 70. I'm gonna grade that up to 70. So that's the first thing you wanna change. This means that there is not as much grain in the darks um, and you're protecting the highlights, uh, you know, except for my window back here, which you could never expose for. Um, there's no way that you would, if I um, exposed for this uh, very hot window back here, the rest of the, um, room would be totally dark. If I then brought in more lights to match the window back there, uh, I'd be squinting like this because I'd need like 5,000 lux in here. LED would be burning through the softbox. And it takes experience to say, we're not gonna have a completely exposed HDR footage here. We're gonna let hot things be hot, we're gonna let dark things be dark, and we're gonna concentrate on what really matters, which is the information in the person's face, which is what we really wanna capture. The next thing is that uh, Canon doesn't actually give an official um, LUT. They give a lot of conversion LUTs, and the conversion LUT they give for C-Log 2 is to convert it into YDR, Wide Dynamic Range. So they go from one log footage format to another log footage format, uh, which isn't particularly helpful. You then need to add more um, contrast if you're gonna get something, anything look like a Rec. 709. The next thing is that Canon's LUTs are just trying to get you to a neutral image. They're sort of a starting point. It's much better, or I, the way that I do it, is use the uh, color space transform node in DaVinci Resolve uh, to take it from Canon C-Log2 uh, to either Rec. 709 or to a Log C rather than C-Log. And that gives me a blank starting point that I can then use LUTs in or apply differently. The third and final point about footage, all footage, not just Canon footage, is that a LUT itself isn't enough to grade an image. You still have to uh, select areas, you still have to put on masks. The easiest way to do this, or the, the simplest way, is just draw a circle around the person's face, take that up in brightness um, and in sharpness, and then uh, inverse that on, an, on a secondary node and uh, drop that down and make that less sharp and make that less contrasty and make that cooler somehow. So uh, you can't carry this type of um, information in a LUT. They're only color conversion, not area conversion. So you'll need to do something like this um, in Resolve or Premiere with uh, a power window if you want footage that looks like this. If you find a LUT that works for you, and I have a bunch um, for sale on Canon Masterclass, you're actually able to load it into the Canon cameras and burn it into the footage, which means that you only need to do minimal grading once you get it into your editor and that the, you're shooting the footage with the LUT attached. Now, this is not great for, you know, 
run and gun documentary outdoor different scenario footage but if you're doing a repeatable consistent setup like i do for these videos i do shoot with the lut or the look they call it burnt in you load the look into the camera profile of the camera uh, i've got a video about that somewhere and then you know what you're getting as you're shooting you know that uh you're getting um a the look that you want and you can light for that frame for that you can dress the set for that look rather than having to do, do all that in post and guess when you're shooting it that is a really good um really helpful camera workflow um, that i've been using since the c70 came out and they allowed us to do that if you're interested in more information and how better to use the entire Canon cinema range, I have a whole bunch of courses on canonmasterclass.com, which covers all of the Canon cinema cameras, including the R5 and R6, as well as a heap of tips about lighting, uh, directing, uh, running a production company, uh, using social media, grading in DaVinci Resolve, and really everything you need to become a complete filmmaker uh, on the Canon cinema platform. You can buy individual courses or stream the entire site with Canon Masterclass Unlimited for just $14 a month. That's a quick little video about why your Canon footage may be underwhelming you if you follow Canon's own guidelines and what to do about that. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.